Hello there. With Star Wars The Old Republic Game Update 6.3, The Dark Descend, we have a new story flashpoint titled Secrets of the Enclave, in which we visit the ruins of the Jedi Enclave on Dantooine in the search of Darth Malgus. There are also a number of relics to be found in the area, related to an achievement called Secrets of the Past, that hold some very interesting links to the events of the original Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic game. In this video, we will be deep diving into the significance of each relic and unlocking its secrets of the past. But before we begin, if you're looking for more information on how to find these hidden relics and other achievements related to the new Secrets of the Enclave Flashpoint, then please make sure to watch my achievement guide in which I show you exactly how to unlock each achievement. I'm Eleva, and welcome to another of my videos where we examine and discuss the lore surrounding the Old Republic era of the Star Wars universe. If you are a Star Wars nerd, then make sure to subscribe to my channel, especially if you're looking for more journeys through the Old Republic. At the end of the video, I will show you where to find a playlist of my other videos related to Darth Malchus and his interest in the Jedi Enclave on Dantooine. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy your journey. The Jedi Enclave on Dantooine holds a very significant importance to the entire Revan storyline. It is where Revan received further training after he left the tutelage of his first master, Kreia, before the Mandalorian Wars. It is also where the Jedi Council made the decision not to join the Mandalorian Wars, a decision that was ultimately defied by Revan and his friend Alec. The Enclave first appears in the original Knights of the Old Republic as a place visited by the player where they receive training to eventually join the Jedi Order, and it plays a direct role in the rebirth of Revan. The Enclave is eventually bombed into ruins by Darth Malak in an attempt to kill Revan and Bastila. The Enclave also appears in the sequel, Knights of the Old Republic II, The Sith Lords, where playing as the Exile, a former Jedi and general to Revan during the Mandalorian Wars, the player returns to the ruins to meet the remaining Jedi Council members who were eventually all killed by Darth Treya. Built close to the ancient Rakatan ruins left over from the Rakatan Infinite Empire and strong in the dark side, the Dantooine Jedi Enclave is a place of pain and suffering alluded to by Aaron Lanier. Not just Revan's betrayal, his mind wiped, and the suffering caused to him by the Jedi Council, but also a lot of death and destruction caused by Darth Malak's bombing of the site and Darth Treyas killing of the remaining Jedi Council members. In Swartor, each of the Secrets of the Past Relics appears to be linked to a series of quests that we experience while on Dantooine during the events of Knights of the Old Republic. The first relic, Fragment of Jar's Test. Jedi Master Jar was a Twi'lek and a member of the Jedi Council on Dantooine. As the player, we meet him along with the rest of the Jedi Council, and he becomes our master as we train to eventually join the Jedi Order. It is through Shah's teachings and trials that Revan rejoined the Jedi Order. However, Shah had also been a member of the Jedi Council during the mind wipe ritual that had been performed on Revan to reset his mind. Master Shah's tests was a three part trial in which we had to prove that we had truly mastered our Jedi training before being able to become a member of the Jedi Order. Trial number one, knowledge of the Jedi Code. In order to learn the fundamental tenets of the Order, we are required to speak to one of the Masters of the Enclave, who shares with us the knowledge of the Jedi Code. We then have to memorize and repeat this knowledge to Master Jar in order to pass the trial. Trial number two, crafting a lightsaber. 
In order to choose a lightsaber color crystal, we are referred to Master Dorak, the chronicler of the Academy on Dantooine, who would be our tutor in learning what crystal to use. Our chosen color crystal would ultimately reflect our position in the ranks of the Jedi Order. A series of questions from Master Dorog would determine our chosen path, and once returning to Master Jaw, we would begin constructing our lightsaber. Trial number three. Facing the dark side. Master Ja asks us to seek out the source of the dark side corruption on Dantooine that was causing the wild cath hound to become savage and ruthless. While already knowing the cause himself, Ja instructs us to seek out the source and then decide how to deal with it. This type of trial is a common theme throughout Star Wars lore. Most notably in The Empire Strikes Back when Master Yoda tells Luke Skywalker that he must face the dark side in a cave on Dagobah. But it can also be seen in Star Wars The Old Republic while confronting Nalan Ralag as a Jedi Consular and Bengal Moore as a Jedi Knight. On Dantooine, the source of the corruption is revealed to be a female Cathar and Jedi Knight named Juhani, who was meditating in a place on Dantooine named the Grove. During her training, Juhani, consumed by anger, had lashed out and struck down her master, Quatra. Now consumed by her despair, she was causing her surroundings to become infected by her emotions. We are given the option to kill Juhani, however, we can also persuade her to return to the Jedi Council and face their judgement. If choosing the persuasion option, we learn that Juhani did in fact not kill her master. Quatra had intentionally provoked her apprentice in a test of facing her emotions as part of Juhani's own dark side trial. Eventually, Juhani agrees to join our party, becomes a companion and confides in us her reason for lashing out. The news about the destruction of her home world. Terrace. Terrace had been destroyed by Darth Malak via orbital bombardment in an effort to destroy Bastila Shan. The second relic, Cassus Sandral's obituary. After completing Shar's test, a father named Arlen Matali visits the Jedi Council, demanding help to find his missing son. Shen Matali. He blames the disappearance of his son on the Sandral family. Alan Matali strongly disliked the Sandrals after they moved to Dantooine and began to directly compete with his plantation business. While speaking to Matali, he tells us that the Sandral family had previously intruded into his property with battle droids in a supposed assassination attempt. After agreeing to speak with Sandral, we discovered the body of Casa Sandral, the son of Nurik Sandral, on the edge of Matali land. Casas, a venturing amateur archaeologist, had been mauled and killed by the savaging Cath hounds, previously affected by the dark side corruption caused by Juhani. Upon speaking to Nurik Sandral, he reveals that he was certain the disappearance of his own son had been the doing of the Matali family, and that this was the reason he had intruded on their land with his battle droids. After receiving the knowledge of his son's death and the truth surrounding the cause, he leaves to grieve his loss. The Third Relic Rahasia's Love Letter after leaving Nurik Sandral, we are approached by his daughter Rahasia, who reveals that Nurik had indeed kidnapped the Matali boy in retaliation for the disappearance of his own son. She begs for our help in freeing Shen Matali because of her fear that her father might harm him in a rage brought on by the death of his own son. 
Rahasia also reveals her forbidden love for Shen, which had blossomed in secret after meeting him in the city. While attempting to free him, Shen says he does not want to leave without Rahasia due to his fear of her being harmed for her involvement in his escape. We can convince them both to escape and then reunite with each other outside. However, they are then confronted by both Arlen Matali and Nurek Sunral along with their battle droids. With high enough charisma, it is possible to persuade both fathers to understand that the couple love each other and they should want what is best for their children by seizing their feud. If we do not have enough charisma, then we fail to persuade the fathers, forcing the two lovers to flee to the Jedi Enclave to be together. Unfortunately, this is the location in which we find Rahasia's love letter, close to a skeleton, which does suggest that they never made it off well before Darth Malak eventually bombarded the Jedi Enclave. The Fourth Relic Ancient Droid's Leg Given that the relic is named Ancient Droid's Leg, I believe this is a reference to the Ancient Overseer Droid, a Rakatan Guardian Droid that could be found in the nearby Rakatan ruins. This droid held the key to prove oneself worthy of accessing a star map, an ancient Rakatan artifact located inside the ruins which Darth Revan and Darth Malak sought after the Mandalorian Wars. It is because of this Overseer droid that we gain access to the star maps in Knights of the Old Republic and eventually discover how Revan and Malak had learned of the Starforge's location. The Starforge was a giant automated shipyard that was used by Darth Revan to build an armada for his new Sith Empire which was of course influenced by the secret Sith Emperor. It was eventually destroyed by the player at the end of Knights of the Old Republic. Thank you for sticking around until the end of the video. If you're looking for more videos discussing Old Republic lore, then check out my playlist of previous videos up in the right corner. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future videos that I have planned. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please consider giving it a thumbs up. And I would love to know where you think Darth Malgus is headed next. So let me know in the comments down below. Finally, I would like to thank my patrons for their continued support. If you would like to become a patron for as little as $1 a month, then links and more details can be found in the description down below. Bye!